Today I'm going to discuss the ability of heavy halogens to trace recycled lithosphere in the mantle. And just before I begin, I've just recently moved to the University of Glasgow, so if you are looking to contact me, my email address is in the process of changing. Uh, my PhD started with the idea that halogens are concentrated within uh, lithologies such as ultra-doceanic crust and serpentinized lithosphere before they're subducted into the mantle. And then following subduction and dehydration, some of the halogens are retained within slab residues that go further into the mantle. And we wanted to find out if we could use those heavy halogens to figure out where that material goes and ends up in the mantle. And we focused on Iceland because it's so lithologically and chemically heterogeneous. We know that it contains a recycled component that takes up about 5-10% of the mantle. And our best estimate is that that material is a peridotite peroxinite hybrid. So throughout the presentation, if I refer to peroxinite, a recycled material, it's a peridotite peroxinite hybrid in reality. And Iceland also provides a unique tectonic setting uh, with the Mid-Atlantic Ridge on shore giving us the opportunity for high density sampling across the country. And to do this, I've looked at not only Iceland, but also the Reykjanes Ridge, so we can compare what Iceland is like compared to the rest of the North Atlantic. So all of the samples that were used in this project were either subglacial or subaqueous basaltic glasses. And these were used because erupting either beneath the glacier or beneath body water means that we should avoid any of our halogens degassing as a very late stage degassing in any magmatic conduit. We've also looked at both halogen concentrations and some halogen ratios. And the ratios we look at are the heavy halogens, so chlorine, bromine and iodine to potassium, uh, and also bromine and iodine to fluorine, although they're not specifically uh, shown in this presentation. And all of these ratios rely on potassium, chlorine, bromine and iodine having similar incompatibility, so they behave in a similar way when entering mineral phases which means these ratios shouldn't be affected by fractional crystallisation or partial melting and should reflect the mantle sources that we're investigating. As I mentioned before, I have samples from along the Reykjanes Ridge from about 57 degrees of latitude moving towards Iceland and samples from across Iceland itself in both the neovolcanic zones, which are highlighted in dark grey, where we have active rifting, and then in the flank zones, which are away from the active rifting and have lower degrees of melting going on and they're highlighted by the red circles. Along the Reykjanes Ridge, uh, the samples on these graphs start down about 57 degrees latitude and as you move to the right you are going on approach to Iceland. Now the top plot is work done by Ollie Shortle which assessed the influence of a peroxinate derived melt on the melt compositions of these glasses and that increases as you move towards Iceland. The halogen concentrations actually show a very similar trend. As you approach Iceland above 60 to 61 degrees, we get a high increase in the chlorine and bromine concentrations. Iodine, there is an increase, but it is a little bit less pronounced. However, when we look at halogen to potassium ratios, that increase isn't seen. It's much more uh, homogeneous and doesn't show really any correlation with this increase in the peroxide derived melt. Uh, this behaviour can also be seen in the bromine to chlorine and iodine chlorine ratios, I've just not presented them on these plots specifically. So before looking at the halogen content in melts from Iceland, I first looked at what the influence of peroxide on melts across Iceland were. This wasn't as well established as it has been for the Reykjanes Ridge. And this makes up the first part of my PhD, which I am in the process of trying to publish, uh, which looked at melt inclusion compositions from across the neovolcanic and flank zones of Iceland uh, to assess what the uh, influence of peroxinite was in different areas. I won't go into too much detail today, um, but we have two melt components that go in. A deep homogenised melt where peroxinite and peridotite uh, mix and then later stages where a much higher degree of peridotite melts uh, mix with that homogenised composition. And what I want you to take away from it is that in the flank zones, the peroxinite derived melts have a much greater influence than they do in the neovolcanic zones. 
So the halogen concentrations of uh, the glasses from Iceland actually overall agrees relatively well with what the picture we're seeing from Reykjanes Ridge. The flank zones that I've highlighted by the red circles have higher concentrations compared to most of the male volcanic zones. So where there is a greater influence of peroxinite derived melt on the melt composition, we are generally seeing a higher halogen concentration in those melts. Compare that to the halogen to potassium ratios and we see a very different story. The highest halogen potassium ratios are observed in the northern volcanic zone. So that's highlighted in red circles, chlorine in A, bromine in B and iodine in C. And these are areas that our models predicted had the lowest contribution from a peroxinite derived melt to the overall melt composition. So they're not related to how much the recycled material is inputting in these areas. What they do spatially correlate with is lead isotopes. Uh, they are presented in D from different glasses across Iceland with the least radiogenic signals in the northern volcanic zone, becoming more radiogenic towards the southwest. And the halogen potassium ratios do a similar thing, highest in the northern volcanic zone, decreasing towards the southwest. And the lead isotopes have previously been suggested to show that there's at least two different recycled domains in the Icelandic mantle and that they might mix uh, together to produce local end member melts within the neovolcanic zones. Now, if the halogen potassium ratios are picking up these two different lithologies, that could be because the subducted lithologies within the slab that have heterogeneous halogen compositions before subduction retain that heterogeneous composition in the residue. And the high density spatial sampling that we've done here may be able to pick out those subtle differences in different material that's being subducted. Now we've only done this for the Icelandic mantle and we have a good understanding of what in general is going on within the Icelandic mantle. And it'd be really interesting if we could start applying this elsewhere to see if this picture can be seen in other areas as well. So just to summarise, Higher halogen concentrations spatially correlate with where we have greater influence from peroxinite derived melts. So the concentrations of the heavy halogens do tell us something about how much recycled material is influencing melt composition. Halogen to potassium ratios don't give us much information about that, but what they can do is highlight the presence of heterogeneous recycled domains if you have high enough spatial sampling. And we've seen that in Iceland and hopefully we'll be able to see that in other areas in future studies. Thank you very much for your time.